Hey, what's up guys, Josh here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the relationship between success and appeasement within the creative world. Now guys, I've heard that success can easily just be chalked up to appeasing the right amount of people. And that's an interesting topic because our progression through society is truly due to, in a lot of cases, mutually beneficial, voluntary transactions between people. Basically, people won't give you what you want unless you appease them with what they want. For example, guys, Steve Jobs was financially successful because he created a product that people wanted and people voluntarily went out and bought it. So guys, like in other industries, it can be said that success in the arts also relies on the appeasement of others. Your financial, your social, your influential success is all based on creating work that people actually appreciate, that people would actually place a value on. And it's really funny because I feel like artists a lot of the time think of their art as a, a form of personal expression and not a medium of external appeasement. I look at it as the juxtaposition between internal appeal and external appeal. Now internal appeal is your artistic preferences and external appeal would be the artistic preferences of others. Now in my experience, I've been an artist since about senior year of high school. That's when I first started dabbling in video production. I knew that I wanted to create art long term and I also wanted to create art that people liked. I also knew though that I didn't want to just cater to the whims of culture. I wanted to make my own artistic lane and convince people of its radness. I wanted to effectively persuade the general external appeal to align with my internal appeal. Sounds great, right? Look at my cute aspirations. Well, let's continue. So my first chance to create my own artistic lane started in about the mid 2000s. This new form of human art called the flash mob started to gain in popularity on the East Coast. Basically a flash mob involves a massive group of people spontaneously doing something out of the ordinary in a public space. So basically this huge spectacle would be a big surprise to anyone that wasn't in on the secret already. Now it was 2007, I was 16 and I wanted to figure out how to organize one of these newfangled flash mobs for myself. So me and my bro Reed Stady up in Portland, Oregon decided to do it. We wanted to be the first people to bring this crazy phenomenon that developed on the East Coast over to the West Coast of the United States. So flash mobbing was definitely initially not a thing that people did. In fact, me and Reed had to literally convince people one by one to participate in this idea that we had. We were basically creating this new lane, at least locally, of social entertainment. I can't count how many times I had to describe what the word flash mob meant to people. Um, a lot of the time they thought it had something to do with stripping. It was hilarious. So using this new social platform called Facebook, we were actually able to corral about a thousand people to our very first flash mob. It was pretty cool. We had everyone corral in the middle of Pioneer Courthouse Square in Portland, Oregon. And at a certain time, they agreed to freeze for five minutes. Side note, this event took place in December in the middle of sub-freezing weather. Get it? That's why we called it the Portland Freeze. So that first event was a complete success. We planned a lot of similar type events um, over the next four years. We called our group PI, or Portland Improv. We were always on the news. It was this really just fun thing that kind of brought people together. So we're still talking about success in the arts, right? Yes, we are. But here's the thing about flash mobbing. In order to create a successful flash mob, you have to persuade not one, but two forms of external appeal. The event needs to be appealing to participate in, aka on-site appeal, and it also has to be appealing to watch after the fact, say in a YouTube video. I called that off-site appeal. People that actually participated in the event would love it and come to the next event, and people that watch the video online after the fact would share it and just further create awareness of our movement and it would just further drive attendance numbers for the next event. Unfortunately, catering to one camp was usually always to the detriment of the other camp. If your focus was just off-site appeal, then you would be wanting to create the most incredible event video ever. So you'd pack the event location with a bunch of cameras and recording equipment um, just so that you can create a video that's so incredible that people would share it. Unfortunately, when you pack a flash mob event location with a film crew, it kind of throws away the spirit of spontaneity and surprise that the whole event rests on. Take note too, this was before the time of the tiny obscure video DSLRs that you could easily hide. So we had to use these huge mini DV tape cameras that we had to lug everywhere. But check this out, if we just focused on on-site appeal, then we just forego with the camera crew altogether. It was a matter of balancing the appeal in both camps. We did it really well though. We put a lot of thought into the utilization of long lenses so we could keep the video equipment way far away and not ruin the surprise of the event. 
and we looked into creating a lot of hidden camera locations and it, it was perfect. It was freaking difficult to pull off sometimes, but we always made it through. So YouTube started a few years later and again, I started from zero. No one knew who I was. Internally, I wanted to make videos about my passions, music video editing theory, complex video editing transition techniques, production breakdowns, dynamic film lighting, and a lot of other things that people weren't really doing on YouTube. I wanted to be a really informative outlet to teach in depth about all these topics, and I wanted to empower people by letting them know that every artistic skill level is in fact attainable. All that matters is effectively learning the needed creative tools. After a few months of creating mostly tutorial videos, I realized something. There was a huge population of people that actually liked what I liked. Interesting, could it be that I was actually on to something? Now walk through this with me. A lot of the time we create this divide between internal appeal and external appeal due to assumptions. Say you have this insatiable interest for broccoli farm development and you go search about it on YouTube and you don't see anything. You then assume that the lack of content correlates with a lack of interest. Could it be though that the interest is there, it's just never been tapped into? Could it be that external appeal is less of a homogenous phenomenon and that out of the 1.5 billion people on YouTube, there's actually probably a big population that shares your interests, no matter how out of the ordinary your interests are. Even in my past experience of organizing flash mobs, I found this to be true. While the friends that I initially recruited had never heard of a flash mob, a lot of the people that they then recruited sure had. It was definitely our effective use of Facebook that brought all of these like-minded flash mob enthusiasts together and helped the event go viral. When creating a YouTube channel, it's actually best that you create content that caters to your personal interests. It's gonna make sure that your content and the way that you present it is interesting. It's possible that there's a vacuum of content in this area and you can then go in and fill it. Like for example, I feel like that I was one of the first people on YouTube to start really tackling in depth um, hip hop music video transitions and the techniques that go with it. I realized that there was a huge demand as far as this content, but there wasn't a lot of supply. So this was actually one of the things that helped me really build up my channel. So friends, take heart. Success does a lot of the time mean the appeasement of people. But that, however, doesn't mean the appeasement of all people. It means the appeasement of the right people. And guess what? You get to choose those people. And those people will be people that love what you love and share your interests. And hopefully you get other people that you are able to persuade and that will hop on the bandwagon later after they watch your content. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to share what your opinion is in the comments below. And remember to keep it chill. Hey guys, go to my latest Instagram post, comment your city of residence and where you think our next channel meetup should be, and I promise I'll give your Instagram account a tiny peek.